hey everyone what's happening so here is the first video for the channel many people reached out to me on linkedin asking about what is sre and who exactly are site reliability engineers and i found i mean i answered them in the dm itself but i myself was searching for you know central platform where people can come and visit the place and understand all about the site reliability engineers although there are many many contents on the internet where you can go find about site reliability engineers what they do what exactly it is but it's full of jargons i mean consider a first year student in the college they don't know about operating systems networking or system designing and all of you i mean the in the college itself like many people are more into software engineering role so they know about ds algo and all these contents are either on youtube many blogs articles they are full of it but for site reliability engineers there's none it's more of a a place where experienced people can go and learn about it but for college students i i guess there's none so my plan here is to start a channel start a platform a central platform where students can come and learn about this role ask questions build a good community around it and learn from it so that's my plan so this channel and this platform will be predominantly for college students indian college students and i'll try to make videos which are more simple to digest so today we will be talking about the road map for sre before talking about road map i want to give an overview about the role itself so sre stands for site reliability engineering and it's software engineering approach to it operations right so it could be like managing systems solving operational problems and automating all those mundane operational tasks right so when it comes to systems what exactly are systems systems could be anything it could be a cloud system it could be bare metal infrastructure right the managing part itself also includes designing stuff designing the structure itself so let's say there is an app it could be any big app let's say linkedin or amazon something like that right so they are like huge systems and they have billions of users so how to create a proper system which is more reliable which is more fault tolerant when these things comes into picture there are a lot of operational problems that needs to be taken care of there are a lot of mundane task which needs to be automated so google came up with this idea let's bring some software engineers and teach them this operational task and with the mindset of software engineering let's solve this all problems right so this is like an overview i can give you right now about sre i'll try to make another video on this topic if you guys want it in more thorough way but as this video is more about road map let's go there so let's talk about first year people so first year students are into more advantages you know why because i believe that's a golden year you have much much more time when compared to others so you can invest your time in exploring a lot of things so i would say in first year you can you can start with simple topics like data structures and algorithms and i think i need not explain you what data structures and algorithms are if you are more into computer science or software engineering roles so you all know about it and there are millions of articles blogs and 
good content on the internet from where you can learn. Get the introduction about DS and Algo, you should start practicing in the first year, right? So while you're doing this, because you are not introduced about operating systems and networking in your first year syllabus. So I would say that out of interest, why not explore on your own? What's operating system? What's networking? What's enabling you to uh, open google.com or open any website, open any app on your phone? or on your laptop, what's enabling it? What's the magic behind it, right? So I would say in the first year, you should start exploring everything on the surface. Just touch all of the topics. Start asking questions for each app or each feature you have on your phone. Let's say, I'll, I'll, this is a, I mean, this is a very interesting question for me. It was asked in one of my interviews, like, when, when you're playing a music on your, on your phone using a music player and suddenly you get a call. So your music stops, right? So why does it happen? What's the reason behind it? So you could start asking simple, simple questions like this and you start exploring everything on the surface. So once you're done with this, like, let's talk about second year students. So by now, you must have written a few codes in either in C or C++ or Python or any language, right? So you, you need to understand what's happening behind it. Many of you must have learned this fact that computer, computers understand just zeros and ones. So when you write a code in C or C++ or Python, it's, I mean, it's not exactly English, but I mean, you can understand the code, what, what you're writing, right? But how everything is happening behind it, what, what's happening behind the curtain, that everything is changing from you know, English language to just zeros and ones. So that's, in, that's what you need to understand. So start exploring this, what's happening behind it. And once you, once you have a knowledge about, a little bit of knowledge about uh, operating systems, like what are processes, what are networking protocols. So I, I'm not asking you to go in depth, but when, when someone is asking you, what are processes, what are threads, What's IP address? So these are like simple things you can explore here. So once you are done with that, I would ask you to start exploring CTFs. CTFs means it's a challenge. Uh, students who are in, in, in the college, they do competitive programming, right? For like, it's like two or three hours contest where you just get a few questions and you solve it using any language you want, right? So CTFs are contests as well. They are challenges. You'll get a few challenges and you need to find flag for it. So for each challenge, you will get some vulnerability in it and you have to crack that vulnerability, understand that vulnerability, use that vulnerability to get the flag. So the website that I used to use when I was in my college, it was cityoftime.org. So it's a nice website where you can get the list of all the upcoming CTF events going to happen or the events which are ongoing as well. So when you go to the alt tabs and you look for here, like there's a real world CTF fourth is going is happening right now from 21st January to 23rd January. And today is 23rd January when I'm while I'm recording this. So you can go to the CTF website, official website. And you can sign up for this and start challenge, right? So that's how easy it is. But before that, 
this is a CTF introduced by Carnegie Mellon University, CMU. It's a group in the university by the students, and it's mainly targeted for students, university and students. So you can start from here. It's very beginner level, and you can start learning from it. Why I'm asking you to do CTFs is because it involves a lot of challenges where you need to learn operating systems, networking. At first, I think you would suffer a lot in creating a team because I suffered a lot. So I used to do everything on my own. I used to learn this and this and this operating system, networking, some uh, developing a few apps so that it can automate a lot of stuff, right? So when you do CTFs, you learn cryptography, you learn operating system, you learn networking, you learn how Linux works, you, you learn how system works. So it's just an ocean of knowledge. So you can start with this. So once you're in third year, keep on doing CTFs, practice a lot. Make a team if you can. That's the best thing because it involves different different skills, right? And so one person can be good at, let's say, operating system. One person can be good at networking. One person can be good at compi compilers. So he knows how a code works, how he can debug a code with debugging tools like GDB or something like that, right? Now by third year, you must have got operating system, networking, or compiler in, in your syllabus, depends on your depends on your college. So by the end of third year, you should start brushing up your DS algo skill as well. Because in your first year, you started it and you 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 may have continued it, but now you need to start brushing it up more. Now the plus thing that I would suggest you to start creating uh, an app on your own. It could be a web app, it could be a mobile app. So when you develop an app, you have to take care of a lot of things. You have to create a backend system. You have to create a front-end system. You have to connect your app with database. So there's a database server. So there are things that you need to take care of. And while creating an app, you will learn a lot of things. What's the magic behind that app, right? So you will learn about reliability, you will learn about security, you will learn about how to secure passwords, something like that, right? So a lot of things you can learn from it. That's the first thing. And that's you, That's what you should do when you are in your third year. You should explore everything in depth. Now the fourth year is the most challenging year, I would say, because now you are now you have to gather all the information that you learned in your previous years. It's a challenging year. So you have to do a lot of things for SRE. You have to learn DSL Go again, again, as in like you have to brush up so that you are ready for interviews. You have to learn OSN networking. And the most important part is system designing ground. So you could be asked questions like how to create a news feed, how to create a collar system, photo collar system, something like that. So you have a design system for that. Here, I, I, want to, I want to elaborate system design in terms of SRE as well. So for software engineering tool, you are asked more about low level designing, more of a database schema and API structures. But for site reliability engineers, you will be focusing more into high level design like what where you should where you should put load balancers cache how you're going to shard the database how you're going to make your database more reliable by backing up things how you're going to structure your networking so that hackers can come inside your internal network and you know ruin everything so this all things comes into system designing system designing for SREs. So thank you everyone. I hope I gave an overview for 
the roadmap for SRE. Put your questions in comments and I'll try to answer all of them. Don't forget to like the video and don't forget to subscribe the channel as well.